Okay, now let's learn about the magnifying glass. So this is the focal point and the object is usually in front of the focal point for magnifying glass. So let's see the image that is formed here. So U will be smaller than F, so object distance will be shorter than the focal length. The first line that we'll usually draw is passing through the center like this and the second line will be parallel to the principal axis and passing through the focal length so the focal point so your focal point will be here and it will look something like this so these are the two lines so you have to join the dotted lines here extrapolate the lines and join the dotted lines together and you will find that your image is formed here and as I've said before the image formed in on the left side is known as the virtual image and on the right side it's the real image so virtual image is represented by dotted lines usually so in this case the image form there are three characteristics first it's upright Upright means like this and inverted means this and it's magnified compared to the original object and lastly it's virtual because it's on the left side of the magnifying glass so linear magnification M is equal to image distance over object distance so that's for magnifying glass and then now we look at the slide projector so this is what the projector looks like it has concave mirror the light source condenser slide projector lens and screen so you don't need to know how to draw a slide projector. You need to know how to identify the slide projector. So the projector is an instrument used to produce large image of a small object. So the slide is placed in inverted position behind the projector lens. So the slide is placed in an inverted position. You don't need to know how to draw the slide projector, but please know the characteristics of the image form. So image form is real, it's upright, and it's magnified. So you can just memorize the one for magnifying glass, which is upright, magnified, and virtual. And the only thing that's different here is that it's real instead of virtual for a slide projector. Next, we'll look at the difference between compound and astronomical telescope. And this was a partial question for KBSM, so it's important. The use of compound microscope is to view very small objects. Astronomical telescope is used to view object at great distance. The type of lens for compound microscope is two high-powered convex lenses. On the other hand, for astronomical telescope, you have one high-powered convex, convex lenses and you have one low power. Both are convex lenses. Focal length for a compound microscope. The focal length of objective lens is smaller than the focal length of eyepiece. For astronomical telescope, the focal length of objective lens is longer than the focal length of eyepiece. So this FO stands for the focal length of objective lens and FE stands for the focal length of eyepiece. And the first image formed in a compound microscope is real, inverted, magnified. 
but the first image formed in astronomical telescope is real, inverted, diminished. And the distance between the two lens is greater than the FO plus FE, which is the focal length of objective lens and the focal length of eyepiece. But the distance between the lenses in astronomical telescope is equal to F O plus F E. For linear magnification, this is very important as well. For compound microscope, you have to take M O times M E. So M O is the magnification produced by objective lens and M E is the magnification produced by eyepiece. As for linear magnification of astronomical telescope, you must use FO divided by FE. So how you can remember this is basically you are using a telescope to look at your enemy and the other word for enemy is for. So that's how I remembered that linear magnification for um, astronomical telescope is FO or FE and the eye condition for compound microscope, the eye is strained. Whereas for astronomical telescope, I is relaxed. So these are the differences between compound and astronomical telescope. And next, let's look at the ray diagram of the compound microscope. So you have an object here between the focal point and two times the focal point. And how you want to draw this is, first of all, there's a line that is passing through the central axis, um, the optical center always. So draw that line first. And then next, you can draw a line that is parallel to the principal axis. And this line will usually converge to the focal point. So the second line is here. So now you have two points, I mean two lines, and the third line will be one that is straight here and then parallel to the principal axis. So it will look something like this. And the lines where all these, the point where all these three lines converge will be your first image. So this is your first image. You can label it. And then next step is you have to draw a construction line. So the construction line is a line passing through the optical center of the eyepiece. So I forgot to label this in the beginning, but this is the objective lens on the left side and the eyepiece on the right side. So now you have to draw a construction line past the optical center of the eyepiece. So it will look something like this. And now you can draw dotted lines. This is where the eye is. And you can draw this line downwards, another line and another line and connect the dotted lines together. So this should be straight line if, you, if drawn properly. And they all should converge at one point. And that point is where the final virtual image is formed. So it's virtual because it's on the left side of the lens. So this is the final virtual image. So this is how you draw the ray diagram for a compound microscope. As you can see, the final image for the compound microscope will be... Okay, the final image is not stated, but it will be virtual and inverted magnified. These are the three characteristics of the final virtual image of compound microscope. And next, let's look at the ray diagram of an astronomical telescope. So the first thing that you can do here is start with, I'll start with labeling first. You have the objective lens and the eyepiece. 
So you can then draw the light rays and remember that this is light rays from distant object. And the reason is because we're usually using telescope to view stars, right? So those are from a distant. So we are drawing light rays from a distant object. Now you can draw a line that is passing through the optical center as such. So it is not refracted if it passes through optical center. And the next line that you can draw passes through the focal point and then it goes parallel to the principal axis. And the third line that you can draw is also parallel and it converges to this point. And it converges to this point right here. So now you have your first image here. So this is your first image. And the next thing that you have to draw is a construction line. Your eye will be here. And a construction line will pass through the center of the eyepiece, optical center of the eyepiece. And the next lines will just be this way. And you have dotted lines here. So the final image is actually formed at eternity sorry, at infinity. So this is what the ray diagram of an astronomical telescope looks like. And ideally, these lines, um, these orange lines here should land on the eyepiece and not outside of it. So what I will do is after this diagram, I will usually erase the eyepiece and draw a larger eyepiece. I will just draw, make the eyepiece larger like this. And when you make that larger, you must make the objective lens larger as well because they are of the same size. So that's another point that you have to note about the ray diagram of astronomical telescope, they have the same size of lens, but for compound microscope, the eyepiece will be significantly larger than the objective lens. So these are the ray diagrams of astronomical telescope and compound microscope.